Now, I know what you're thinking. What the f*** are you smoking, Leaky? The Tigers are favourites to finish last for the third season in a row, having gone through their third coach in three years. I'm unsubscribing immediately. Don't unsubscribe. I've never asked you to subscribe, but I think asking you not to unsubscribe is something different. I think I can get away with that. Hear me out though, because while it's 100% valid to point out that they are probably headed towards their third consecutive wooden spoon, this year has been a significant step forward for the Tigers in my opinion. And I am more confident than ever that looking into the future, they are building in the right direction. And by the end of this video, I'm quite confident that you will agree with me. Let's get into it. The first and main reason for that is just how young this side is and how many impressive young players they've brought through this season. Here's some stats that are gonna blow you away because they blew me away and I kinda knew they were coming. This Tigers side is the youngest top 30 in the competition with an average age of 24.16. The second youngest side in the comp, the Titans, have an average age of 25.13. That's right, the Tigers are on average an entire year per player younger than the second youngest side in the competition. And they stand out too, because every other side has an average age somewhere in the 25 to 26 range. And then you've just got the Tigers there in the early 24s. And that number is being dragged up significantly by the likes of 30 year olds John Bateman, David Klemmer and Justin Ollum, 31 year old Api Corusau, and 33 year old Aiden Caesar. That's a six of their squad who are aged 30 or over and they're still by far and away the youngest side in this competition. They're the youngest Tigers side since 2006, and that 06 side didn't have a single player aged 30 or over in it. And then you look at the quality of some of the young players that they've brought through. Obviously the standout is Lucky Galvin, who I could talk about for ages, but by now you'd all know just how good he is. So he's 19, right? Other teenagers who've played first grade for them this season include Talon De Silva, Luke and Kit Lolili'i, Latu Fainu, Josh Valetti, and Heath Mason. All of those players came into the NRL and were immediately solid. Then as well, you've got 22-year-olds Jareem Buller and Fanua Bole, 21-year-old Justin Matamua, and 20-year-old Samuela Fainu, each of whom have already proven to be standout players for the Tigers on their day, and their days have just become more and more frequent over the course of this season. Those are the guys who have defined this season for the Tigers. Those are the guys who, in my opinion, have outshone the established stars like Isaiah Papali'i and John Bateman. To me, that's really impressive, and it is extremely promising for them moving forward. Not to mention, too, that their coach is the youngest in the league, and the least experienced. He will develop himself as he gets older, which will only be good for the Tigers. And that brings me to my next point, which is that when you sit down to analyze the way that the Tigers have played this year, while they have consistently lost, they've consistently been competitive. Some of their losing efforts include scoring 28 points against the Cowboys in Townsville, 28 points against the Storm at Leichhardt, and 30 points again against the Cowboys at Leichhardt. Seven of their losses this year came by two tries or less. And even just the general flow of games, while there were a handful that they were just never in to start with, I think for the most part the Tigers did generally match the intensity of their opposition. Consistently they have ended up on the wrong side of the scoreboard, but when you're building a club, I'm far more concerned about the way you're playing than necessarily whether you win games. Now for the vast majority of clubs, that's nothing really to be proud of, but for a really young Tigers side who get battered from pillar to post every week by the media, I think you can really take a lot of positives out of that. Yes, they do deserve to be where they are on the ladder, but they didn't spend the whole season as pushovers. And I would say that their ladder position simply reflects how good they are. They've got the worst roster in the comp and they finished at the bottom. To me, that isn't disappointing, it's expected reasonable and I'm not going to judge the Tigers by any higher standard than that until they have a higher quality roster and in my opinion that high quality roster will pretty much be there next season and I reckon the Tigers have been very very clever in the way that they have planned and set up for the arrival of Jerome Luai. To prove my point let me tell you the story of a club who very much didn't. At the start of 2021, Matt Burton signed with the Bulldogs for season 2022. The Dogs had a full year to prepare for his arrival, and realistically they weren't going to be challenging for the finals in 2021, so all of the focus was on building for 2022. What they should have done that year is look at their halves and pick the man who they thought would best partner Burton. Then they should have played that guy at halfback for the entire season, 
and prepared for Burton to come in at 5-8. Instead, inside the space of one season, the Bulldogs went through the following halves combinations. And forgive me for reading this off a screen because there's a lot of them. Flanagan Avarillo, Flanagan Lewis, Flanagan Avarillo again, Avarillo Wakeham, Avarillo Flanagan, Avarillo Lewis, Avarillo Beyond Diodo, Flanagan Lewis, Flanagan Wakeham, Avarillo Wakeham. They finished that year with the wooden spoon, winning only three games for the entire season. They were four wins behind the Cowboys who finished in second last. They not only failed to get results, but they fundamentally failed in the objective of picking and sticking with the guy who they thought would be Matt Burton's best long-term halves partner. Compare that to the Tigers this season. They signed Jerome Luai before the year started as well, and they sat down and thought, right, who is the guy that we want to pair him with long term? Enter Lucky Galvin, a guy who they picked and stuck with for the duration of the season. They paired him with an experienced halfback in Aiden Caesar whenever they could, and just backed him to grow into the role and get ready for Luai's arrival next year. They did exactly what the Bulldogs failed to do. And to me, that not only has their halves settled for next season, but a combination of Luai and Galvin is pretty bloody good. I rate the hell out of Jerome Luai, and I see Galvin as the best young player in the league. To me, it's comfortably the best half pairing that the Tigers have had since Brooks and Moses, and it's got the potential to be better than those two. And to actually go back to speaking about the Bulldogs, but in a more positive light, I'll draw another comparison. I am firmly in the camp that Jerome Luai can be the same man to the Tigers that Stephen Crichton is to the Bulldogs. Crichton is now known as a brilliant leader who has an infectious positive impact on the players around him, stemming from the commitment that he has shown throughout his entire career. Why can't Luai be those things? He is equally outgoing, equally successful, and as a halfback he inherently does have leadership qualities. I think the Tigers knew that when they made the signing. They knew that he could be the player that turns their club around, and my tip is absolutely that he will. I'm not saying that they'll be immediate premiership contenders, but consistent top heat in the next two to three years. Yeah, why not? Not to mention as well the signing of 2023 Rookie of the Season winner Sunia Taruva. I know he's come in and out of first grade a bit this year, although to be fair I don't think that would have happened if he was staying at Penrith for next season. But he is a high quality outside back, whether that be centre or on the wing. To me, that's now another key spot in the outside backs that is locked down for the Tigers moving forward. They'll be able to put together a backline of Staines, Fatape, Olam, and Taruva next season, which will be the best backline that they have had in a long time. I guess though, just to round things off, one thing that stood out to me when I was making this video was that no matter what the result of the Spoon Bowl this Friday, the Tigers will have finished the season winning at least a quarter of their games. And I don't know about you, but to me, considering all of the talk about the dire situation that the Tigers are in, winning a quarter of their games is pretty good. It's one and a half times the wins that they got last season, and with a much more promising team. For a side that objectively on paper is the worst team in the comp, I think that's pretty respectable. So yeah, it seems pretty clear to me that this season was a very positive step forward for the West Tigers. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.